Hello. All right. Um, continuing our series on a uh, Motley Crew. All right. Uh, I know I said I was going to do a uh, Doctor Feelgood after Girls, 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 but uh, I saw like two Doctor Feelgood videos on my feed uh, yesterday, so I I didn't want to I didn't want to like oversaturate the uh, Motley Crew feed with you know Doctor Feelgood videos. So uh, I, I did listen to uh, Doctor Feelgood. Um, yeah, I still don't really like it too much. Uh, but it got me curious, you know, uh, it's, you know, probably gonna get worse in the nineties, right? I actually I skipped over the self-titled, uh, album. I've, I've never actually listened to the whole thing. Um, I know a lot of people call that one a, uh, hidden gem. I'll probably give it a shot eventually, but anyway, uh, what's next? Well, uh, enter the world of 1997's Generation Swine. All right. Um, this album sucks. This is way, way, way worse than anything they released in the 80s. Um, I had a vague recollection of checking out this album like years ago, like, you know, for free. Obviously, I wouldn't go pay for it, of course. But uh, I, I'd forgotten everything, and uh, I wish I could forget it all again. All right. Uh, first, I'm going to name some artists, and I want you to tell me if you ever want to associate these bands with Motley Crue. All right. Smashing Pumpkins. The Offspring, Collective Soul, Stone Temple Pilots, Marilyn Manson, Sheryl Crow, Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm dead serious, you know. Whether you like these artists or not, um, well, I hope you don't like Billy Ray Cyrus, honestly. But those are the vibes I'm getting here, really. I mean, uh, and, you know, by the way, I'm not saying all those artists are, like, equal in quality or anything. I mean, come on. But, um I mean, you just, you really don't want to hear middle-aged 1997 Motley Crue trying to cash in on that shit, you know, or, or any of the lame trends on here. Uh, I think they might have been listening to some electronic shit, too. I mean, I actually like 90, like, old-school electronic shit, but um, I, I just don't think these guys have much of a knack for it, you know. I, I hear a bit of uh, Hootie and the Blowfish as well, which is uh, very bad. So, uh, the album starts off with just, like, pure collective soul, live, goo-goo dolls ass, fucking counting crows type fucking goofy pop rock, just bush type quasi-grunge shit. I mean, it's just embarrassing, man. I, I can kind of see how these songs might be catchy to some people. Uh, I, I actually didn't know this. Robin Zander and uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick are uh, doing backing vocals on some of these songs, man, but... Uh, doesn't really make anything better. Um, I could almost see like some contrarian guy just latching onto this record. Like, like if you really love like nineties radio alternative and you, you might like Molly Cruz take on it, you know? Uh, cause I mean, this is uh different, you know, it's relatively diverse compared to their other records, but, uh, that's not always a good thing, you know? And Miley Cruz is not one of those bands you want to see, like, experimenting, uh, especially not in a way that's, like, just obvious, like, trend hopping, you know. Uh, it comes off, like, kind of just out of touch, really, man. Um, Glitter, the song Glitter might be the worst song I heard on here. Um, I This is going to sound crazy. This type of song would be it would sound better if it was by like the spice girls or tlc or something like i literally think uh the last half of the album would, be, would have been better if they had hired like cheryl crow instead of uh vince neal uh vince neal almost wasn't even on this album apparently man uh because i'm not a crew expert so i, I was, had to read the fucking wiki page on this shit but um I mean, you can just tell it's kind of, I don't know, just, I get the feeling that his vocals are just kind of an afterthought, man. And uh, he doesn't really sound like Vince Neil on some of these songs. Uh, the, the whole album just kind of lacks identity. Sounds bad. They got session guys coming in doing uh, Mick Mars's parts, apparently, man. So that's great. Because, you know, I, I, all the songs sound like a different shitty band you know because a lot of times i mean there's some great albums where you're like oh man every song sounds like a different band sometimes that can be good you know not not in this case uh and then that last song brandon man that's i don't know i 
I know it's about like Tommy Lee's kid or something. Uh, I just don't care. Honestly, man, this album kind of reminds me of uh, Megadeth Risk in some ways, which that came out like I think two or three years after this one, man. So Dave Mustaine might have been like a closet Generation Swine fan, you know. But um, anyway, don't forget to subscribe. You know, let us know in the comments what you think about Motley Crue, Generation Swine. I'm going to give this one a one star out of five. Uh, don't forget to like the video and share. Thank you.